Hello, this is Lawrence. So I did a previous video where I showed how you can use Visual Studio Code for programming in D. I showed the Visual Studio extension for D and uh, the various features available, which you can find a link to that video under the description of, uh, of this video. And uh, today I'm going to show you how you can debug your code in Visual Studio Code. And there's already support for it through an extension. So let's get right to it. The first thing you want to do is to open up the extension pane by clicking here and you want to search for DLang or D programming language and it will show a couple of them. The one you want is the first the one by WebFreak. You know this one provides auto completion, syntax highlighting and everything else out of the box. And then you want to install this one too. This is the one used for debugging. And then once you have the two installed you are good to go and the next thing you want to do is to have a debugger on your computer currently visual studio code extension uh, support uh, only three of them uh, gdb which is the GNU debugger uh, it also support lldb and then the last one i believe is uh, mago mi debugger now I'm on Linux and I have the G, uh, GDB installed so that is what I'm going to be using so make sure you have your debugger installed any of the three and uh, we have the extension we have a debugger we are good to go and then you want to click here that's where you, you will see the debug pane and then you can see it shows like we need to customize our debug configuration so you want to click here and then uh, the, the extension provides you know templates for debugging uh, out of the box so you can see the, the support for GDB LLDB and then Mago MI debugger but I'm going to go with GDB so I'll just click on it to define a GDB debug configuration and then it will open up a file right so you can see it will create a launch.json file in your visual studio in a visual studio code directory in your project and that is the one will be uh it will the one that will specify your debug you know configuration so there are three things important here the first one is the the target this is the executable you want to debug right so you you the debugger basically works like you point it to an executable and then it will load it into the debugger and then it will do analysis on it so uh, you want to enter the name of your executable here but you can see I have a DAP project here so and I don't have it built so uh, I have it built here so you can see the the debug debugger demo binary so that's the one I will be using to debug but um, it also provides a way to search the the root of the workspace right so this is where you want to enter the the workspace root and uh, this particular syntax you know specify that the folder in which we are is the root of the project and then we want to specify the executable here so mine like you can see here is basically is the name of your DAP project right so debugger demo that's the name of my DAP project so I'll just enter it because it will de uh, generate that executable so I'll just enter it here debugger demo and then I will save and then I'll now be able to debug it so this is the app.d file which has sample code that I I'm going to debug so I want to set a couple of breakpoints here I want to set a, set a breakpoint here and then uh, here um, here too and then yeah that will be all okay I want to set one two here basically I will be going through all these sections of the code so I want to show you how the debug flow works so you want to click on run 
and then it will launch the debugger right so this is the debugging pane I want to show you a couple of things here the local is for the variables already de defining your your program so uh, we can you can see we are in the main so it shows you the first the second the total all of these are variables defined in my code you can see them here and uh, you can see because I set a breakpoint here it has paused here and then it is showing me here all the 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 values of the various variables I've defined so you can see it is paused here so none of them has been assigned a value yet so if you hover over the the name you can see um, there is nothing set for it right so and sometimes the debugger prints you know do some weird stuff but uh, most of the time it works so let me put another debug a breakpoint here and then here are the controls you use to you know navigate through your code whilst in a debug session so the first one is you 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 it, it takes you through the next iteration of your debug flow right so the code will go through a certain flow to the end of the you know the, the code so it will start from the top to down right so continue will take you through the debugging step and then the step over will like skip the the line to the next line of code so that's what it does this will move to the next execution uh, the call stack in your code and then this one is more like the you know step over the current line so if i click on step you see it will move to the next line even though i don't put a i haven't put a breakpoint there so that is how it works and this is a step in i will show you that one later so now i'll press the, the step over to the next line you can see the first name is assigned a value but the second hasn't been assigned in it yet and the value is now zero because the integers are uh, initialized by default and then it is zero now so once i click on the step over again you can see um the first is set let me step again to you can see the second is set right so the debugging you know feature enables you to inspect your code or, you know step by step in a slow motion so instead of putting in the right line everywhere the debugging you know experience in enables you to do it more conveniently so i can do it every step you know inspect what is happening in my code so i'll click on step over to go to the next line you can see the total is now five right two plus three is five and then i'll go to the next line by the way you can click continue to move to the next breakpoint right so if i click it will move to the next breakpoint and then um, i'm on this line right so i want to like uh step into it because you know it is taking the value of a function so i want to step into this function that is being executed so that is where the step into and the step out you know buttons come in so if i click step in it will take me into the function that is being called you know this one this is the line you know so it will take me into the function and then I'll be able to like uh, follow through you know every step of the way what is happening in fu my function you can see I have a filter function here which is more like an iteration so the you can see it hasn't been run yet so if I click continue it will change here you know you can see my call stack it has moved into it has moved into the, the you know the filter uh, functions execution const uh, context and when I click on so you can see here we are now on one uh, this one we are on it if I click continue again it will move to the next iteration which is two so when I hover over it I can see two so the debugging session enables you to go through your code step by step 
and if I click on it again it will go through 3 and then 4 right 3 and then 4 you can see it 4 and when I click again you know it is it is in, it has basically finished you know running through the code so that's how it works so the debug session enables you to step through your code and see what is happening so that's pretty much it right that's how the debugging session works but uh you realize you know i had to build my code before i could run the debugger on it right so imagine you are coding right you'll be changing a lot so you don't want to be uh going back and forth between you know running that build and then you know before you start the debugger so you want you can automate all of that and i'm going to show you how you can do that uh you want to create another property here is called pre launch task and then uh, just like you see in the name before the debugger is launched you want to run a task and in our case the task will be the build task you know we are going to run that to compile the code before we launch the debugger so i will go with it and then here is where you want to put the name of the task to be executed right right now we don't have a task defined so if you want to define a task you want to go here and click on configure task you know Cody already provides you with tasks you, you know templates out of the box so you can see we have here dub build uh, dub rebel dub run dub test in our case we want to just build it right and then the debugger will now load the executable to debug it okay so i'll go with that and then it generates you know you can see the tasks are also you know create a file here and then you, you, they are all defined in this so you can modify it at any time and then you can see the code here so basically that's pretty much how it works what we want to do now is to uh, save it and then uh, copy the, the, the label that's the name of the task so we'll paste the, the name of the task in the launch file and then basically that's the name of the task right and uh, that's what will be executed and then what happens is uh it is going to use the dmd compiler and then it is it, has, it is targeting the x x86 x uh, you know 64 architecture it's going to run it in debug mode basically you want to run your code in debug mode if you want to run a debugger on it and then it is configured to be an application right so uh, and this is the task name and then you have the description of the task as to what it does so I would save it and then the name will be pasted here so this is the name of the task so if I click on debug it is going to run this task before the debug gets launched right so I'll click on um, debug you can see the is building my project then the debugger will now start to run okay so that's how it works so anytime you make changes to your code you just um, uh, label let me just change my code a little bit label bell yeah label I think I got it right and then if I you know stop the debugger and I click I click on run again it will build my code before the debugger gets launched right so it's much more convenient to do that so that's pretty much how it works and the last thing you know let me show you something else you can see here i have buttons here that uh if i click on you know this one for instance that build it will run my code right so yeah so these are through an extension right so you want to define uh, you might want to define buttons that you click on to run your code like you know the experience you get you know with something like an ID you know Visual Studio Code is not an, an ID so if you want to have you know that sort of 
behavior you have to do it through an extension and then I have an extension installed here which enables me to do that um, it is called you know, Visual Studio Code Action Buttons so you want to go to the extensions and then search for action buttons oh action oh, yeah action buttons you can see I already have it installed it's called uh, action buttons yeah action buttons by Sion Lanlake if I pronounced it correctly so that is the one you want to install Visual Studio Code action buttons so once you have it installed you can you know read on how it works from the readme so it provides you with a bunch of configurations that you are going to paste in your uh, workspace settings and then it will you know within the configuration you can so let me show you I already have it so once you can copy this code right and then you want to paste it in uh, your workspace uh, configuration file and how you launch it uh, you open up your workspace con configuration file is press ctrl shift p and then you want to type workspace uh, workspace workspace settings right you want to open workspace settings the JSON file right this one will open up the GUI but you want to open the the JSON file because we want to edit it directly and then yeah this is where you paste the code right you can see I already have mine defined and uh basically these are the ones you really need the we want to set this one to false you know by default it is set to false you don't need it and then this is the reload button you can see here I have a button here that uh, you know when I click on it it will reload the extension in case I add any button and then here are the commands right so these are elements in this array that gets loaded as button so you want uh, how it works it's you set a current working directory a uh, current working directory sorry uh, which is my workspace folder so I want to run it from my workspace folder right in my workspace folder I want to run this com uh, button I want to you know define this button and then I want to give it a color green you can give it any color you want and then a single instance through because I want to run it uh, there should always be one instance running at a time you don't want to click it multiple times and have it you know running multiple uh, builds in case of my dub so you want it to run once at a time and then the command you want it to run right so you can enter any dub command here that when you click this button it will get run right so it doesn't really depend on dub pc any command can be run from this command uh, attribute so I've defined a couple of buttons here I have uh, dub run which runs dub I have a uh, dub build which builds the project and then I have dub docs which generates you know docs of my code right so that's what I use and then once you save it you click on reload it will load all the buttons and then they will appear here so that's all when I click on the dub run which I've defined here to run it it will just run dub if I click you know it will just run dub and compile my code and then run it okay so that's pretty much it um, we covered using the, ex the, the debug extension and uh, creating tasks and then also you know defining custom buttons you know which is completely optional if you want you can do that too and then once you click it it will build your project so that's how to set up your D uh, your Visual Studio Code to debug D code and uh, yeah that will be all see you next time